Hi, and welcome to Healthy Canadians, your space for nuanced conversations and expert insights about the health topics that matter to us all. We have practical information and resources to help you and your family stay healthy. I'm your host, Megan Bayan. Seems obvious to say that our mouths are part of our bodies, but for a lot of us, oral health can seem a bit separate from our overall health. The tooth is, it has pretty major impacts on our general health throughout our lives. We'll bite into all of that in a moment, but first, a word from us. Healthy Canadians is brought to you by Health Canada and the Public Health Agency of Canada. We aim to give you information and perspectives about the health topics that matter to all of us living in Canada. What we discuss won't always reflect the official positions or policies of the Government of Canada, but that's okay. These are conversations, not news releases. Okay, we've got a lot to chew on today. Let's talk about oral health. Today I sat down with Lisette Dufour, Senior Oral Health Advisor with Health Canada's Dental Care Task Force, and a dental hygienist with more than 40 years of experience. Welcome, Lisette. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. I'm going to just start off by saying I'm afraid to go to the dentist. I'm not afraid. I'm nervous about going to the dentist. And so... I feel like this show can help people like me, or maybe people have never even been to the dentist, um, or people need to brush up on their oral health routine. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes when I go to the dentist, I, I kind of black out. Like, I'm not taking in all the information that I know I need to, and I know oral health is super important. So tell me why you're so excited about talking about oral health. Well, I think it's important for people to understand the uh, impact of oral health over their overall health. So the more you know about a subject, the less anxious you should be. Love that. So thinking about the why behind it, right? The why behind we do these things for a routine makes it more meaningful, maybe more likely that we'll do them? Absolutely. Because if you know why there's a reason that you should brush and you should floss, you're probably going to be doing it more often, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the angle that um, we're talking about preventative measures rather than interventions, right? And that's what we're going to talk about a lot today, about how can we take care of our oral health really well um, so we don't need some of those bigger, scarier, maybe, interventions. Well... Everything starts with prevention, right? So if you uh, go to the dentist on a regular basis and if you learn exactly right off the bat how to take care of your teeth, you're not going to have to go through these, what people fear, you know, the local anesthetic, which is the needle, getting your teeth pulled, all of that. So if you do everything you're supposed to do, then you probably may not have to go through all of these interventions. Lisette, I just got a little sweaty. I know, I when saw that. Teeth pulled. I mean, that that is at another level. <laughs> it, is, it is. It is. I was thinking root canal in the back of my mind, but um, we won't go there. No. This is this is going to be a positive, yes, fun conversation. <laughs> okay, let's start at the beginning because we're going to talk about oral health throughout our lives. Let's start at the very beginning. When should someone start thinking about certain habits for maintaining good oral health? Well, if we have the opportunity to plan our pregnancy, I believe it starts right at preconception. To me, it's important to uh, plan and make sure that you get your teeth uh, cleaned up, to make sure that everything is fine, that you get an assessment done, to make sure that there's not going to be a problem during your pregnancy. I'm not saying that you can't get the work done during the first uh, trimester. It's just that as your pregnancy advances, it's going to get less and less comfortable to be sitting in the dental chair for a prolonged period of time. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So when someone is pregnant, are there specific things someone needs to do to take care of their teeth that's different than what you would normally do as an adult? Well, because you're pregnant, uh, sometimes our hormones are totally out of balance, which can cause what we call gingivitis. So 
early uh, stage of gum disease. So your gums may get puffy, they may get red, and they may bleed as well. Keep on brushing, keep on flossing. Even if it bleeds, it's going to get better. It's, However, make sure that everything is fine. So go and see, uh, check with an oral health professional to make sure that everything is fine. If you need to get dental work done while you're pregnant, by all means, it can be done. It's just that you may want to avoid x-rays, for instance, because you want to protect protect your baby and you want to protect yourself. So make sure when x-rays are unavoidable, and it, it could be unavoidable, make sure that you wear the lead apron to protect yourself from the radiation. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So keeping up with your regular basic routine and going to see an oral health professional mm -hmm. when you need to, when it's necessary. Okay, let's talk about babies. Yes. When does a baby need to start brushing its teeth? Well, usually babies are born without any teeth, right? <laughs> right? So it's important to know that. However, I've seen babies that are born with one or two teeth. It hasn't happened too often, but uh, I've seen it happen before. So after the feeding uh, of your baby, make sure that you use a soft cloth to just dab, the, uh, wipe the uh, gums off to make sure that you wipe off what's left of your feeding. It's important to do that, but it's also important for the baby to feel that it's normal to uh, get into that habit right off the bat until the teeth erupt. When the teeth are erupting, then it's time to use a, uh, a soft bristle baby toothbrush. Okay, so it starts before there's even teeth there. Yes. Okay, yes. and when does a baby go to their first dental or oral health professional appointment? Well, in Canada, we recommend to bring your baby to the oral health professional within the first six months of the first tooth erupting or within the first year. Okay. Yeah. And when can a baby start brushing its teeth? Or maybe more of a toddler, like as soon as you can hold on to a toothbrush, you're good to go? Eh, not quite. Not okay. quite. I think they need supervision for a while, at least until they can write their name uh, themselves. So they need to be supervised. Of course, oh, wow. they want to gain independence. Yeah, that's right? a long time. Yes, it is. So what we do suggest is usually to have them brush their teeth. But afterwards, some supervision is required to make sure that they have reached all the areas that they're supposed to reach. It's very tough for them. So it, that's why it's important to ensure that you supervise your baby at least until they're six or seven years old. That makes sense. Yeah. This might be controversial, but do you really need to take care of a baby's teeth? Like... They're going to fall out anyway. Oh, my God. I hear that one so often. Why should I take care of baby teeth? There's a second set coming anyways, you know. I think it's important because your first set of teeth is actually what is going to help the baby start to learn to speak, to eat, to masticate their food. Of course, the baby's teeth are going to fall off on a regular pattern, but that's normal. So as soon as baby teeth start erupting, uh, start falling, it's normal because there's another tooth underneath that's going to start to take its room. So you need actually the space as long as possible. You need to keep those spaces to make sure there's space for the permanent teeth to come in. It's okay. very important to keep the baby teeth. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so thinking about a positive experience when you go, when you're, a parent is bringing their child to a, a dentist or an oral health professional, either for the first time or maybe they're a little nervous. Are there things you can do to help make that more pleasant, more positive? <laughs> Makes me laugh, that question, because most of the time the parents are actually going to tell their child, don't worry, it's not going to hurt. <laughs> well, the whole time while they will be sitting in the chair with the oral health professional, they'll wait for the time to hurt. So that may not be the appropriate okay. thing to tell your Counter child. Counterintuitive. Yeah. yeah. So no need to say too much. We're going to see the oral health professional. Uh, that person is going to look at your mouth. It's going to maybe brush your teeth if there's a bit of plaque left. And that's about it. We want to try to make it as pleasant as possible as a first visit. Okay. And subsequent visits, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but being very honest with the child to say, this is exactly what's going to happen. Here are the steps so they kind of know what to expect. Do not lie to patients who are sitting <laughs> in the chair because it's worse. So be as honest as possible and make sure you use the appropriate language that the child will understand as well. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. What about, you know, a prize or bribery? Do we recommend that at all? <laughs> 
Because <laughs> I'll tell you, as a child, I loved going to the dentist because I always got a little something afterwards. What well, do you think about that? Well, this is more of a one of a psychological way of doing it. I don't believe in bribes at all. Okay. I don't. I don't. Hot topic. The, the hottest prize that they can get after their visit is probably a toothbrush. So to me, is that a bribe? I doubt it. It's something that is, that is spoken like a true dental hygienist. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest prize you can get is a toothbrush and some that's basically some clean teeth. Yeah, How about that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's think about getting older. So you're a teenager, young adult. Are there like specific tips or things we need to think about at that age? Well, we've talked about little kids. We've talked about children. Now, as teenager, you know, there's a comes with school the pressure. You know, um, and the um, What they are now drinking uh, is specialty coffees. It's uh, sports drinks. It's, uh, I don't want to say the brand name, but, you know, everybody has those. To me, I, I'm not telling you not to do it and not to uh, have it, but you got to make sure that you rinse your mouth with water afterwards. Because, and I'm not talking about, you know, athlete, elite athletes. They may need those sports drinks to ensure that they get all their electrolytes back. But... Like us, you know, if we are going to go outside, you know, there's nothing better than a tall glass of water. <laughs> there's no sugar into that. So let's make sure that we try to have a, a diet that has less sugar. Okay. And if you do have sugar, keep brushing or rinse your mouth. Okay, so practically, if I'm going to school, I'm having a sugary drink during the middle of the day, I don't need to necessarily bring my toothbrush to school. I could go to the washroom and just rinse out my mouth. Well, it would be nice, but I don't know a lot of teenagers who are carrying their toothbrush in their backpack, <laughs> right? So let's be actually honest Realistic, with each other. Realistically, right? if they can have their bottle of water and they can swish with the uh, the water, that'll be good enough. Okay, this might be controversial. What about if you use a straw? Is it better? That's what I heard. If you use a straw with a sugary drink, it kind of bypasses the front of your teeth oh. and it's not as damaging. Yeah, it could be it could be better, but I hope you don't use the straw when you're going to drink your rinse of wa your drink of water. <laughs> you still have to rinse it's the water pass. Exactly, okay. exactly. That's, that's super helpful. Okay, so let's think about getting older, adults, and then seniors. What do they need to think about? And I'll just say that I had perfect tooth health until I was about like 30, and then it all went downhill. Is that like a normal experience for people? Well, I I tend to say as young adults. As children, you're covered under your parents' dental benefits, right? But as you get older and you come off your the dental benefits from your parents, you may have a job that does not necessarily have the benefits. So it's important to make sure, even more important, that you brush and floss very well if you cannot afford the cost of um, of tooth health, right? Of visiting an, an office as well. So to me, it's what I've seen is young adults tend not to go to the dental office for a while until they get the benefits. And that's where usually they... And if they don't take care of their teeth and if they drink those specialty coffees all the time without rinsing and if they don't brush adequately, at that time you will de usually develop tooth decay. Okay. So a really important time, especially if you don't have access yeah. Yeah. to be doing all the good things to yeah. maintain good oral health. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about an, e an older audience. Well, more and more, by, in Canada, more and more we are uh, aging And we may not be aging healthy, but we're aging with our teeth now because people are, uh, they know about oral health and they know about tooth health. So they are keeping their teeth for a longer period of time than we used to. So because people may lose manual dexterity as they get older, it may be tougher for them to brush adequately. Because people are taking a lot of medication, it causes less saliva. So you may end up having more tooth decay because of that. Some cognitive impairment also may appear. So people may forget to brush or may forget how to brush. Mm. So it is actually more and more important as you get older to ensure that you can brush. If you can't do it on yourself, let's hope you have people or caregivers that can help you with that. I was just going to say that, that there's obviously a role for caregivers here too, yeah. right? To get educated and like what is available and tools to probably assist exactly. their older family members or friends. Exactly. We can find a lot online as well uh, okay. with regards to that. Yeah. And that's... Uh, Unfortunately, this is part of reality, right? As we get older, we may uh, 
we may end up having those issues. But, you know, let's hope we have the right caregiver and that they know what to do. Absolutely. Okay, I want to jump into good oral health practices. Okay. Like, let's go back to basics. Yep. What are the essential things we need to do? Let's start with brushing and flossing. Yes. How often do we really, be honest, yep. do we really need to brush and floss? Have you ever seen me not honest? <laughs> no. I will say it right <laughs> off the bat. Give it to me straight, Lisa. Well, you will visit a lot of sites, actually, that tell you to brush three times a day, and I personally don't think you have the ability to be able to brush all the time. So I believe in the equation two times two. Brush twice a day for two minutes each time or the duration of a song. So this is usually easy. Love that. Yeah. And each tooth has got five surfaces. Three that can be clean with actually a toothbrush and two that must be clean with something that goes in between teeth like dental floss, right? Yeah. So make sure that you use a toothbrush that's... It has soft bristles because people tend to brush hard. So imagine if you use a hard bristle toothbrush and you even brush hard, you may end up causing more damage to the enamel than actually doing some good. So use the soft bristle toothbrush and use a dental floss. There's a way of using the dental floss, and I feel that it's pretty tough sometimes to actually wrap the floss around your middle finger and use the four other fingers to hold it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it's tough. <laughs> so they do have other products that can actually help out, and it's called those flossing aids. Okay. They look like forks. Do you, um, wanna, do you yeah, have one I here? Think, Maybe yes, you could uh, show those who are watching. Yeah, I think I do. And this is what it would look like. So it's like a fork. And it's got a dental floss in between the two uh, prong of the fork. And you just insert it in between the two things and you just floss as if it's a flossing mechanism. Go back and forth and just go back into a seesaw movement and bring it down. These are great. Um, they're actually cheaper and... Um, it's easy to access in there. So you can find them everywhere. If you don't want to use the fork, you can use like those toothpicks, but they're made out of um, caoutchouc, rubber. A little rubber. Yeah, yeah. They're made out of rubber around it. So you just insert it and then you massage the gum. So it's, it's really okay. good. It's, it's kind of like a toothpick with a little bit of rubber on exactly. the end. Exactly, exactly. So these are fantastic. Could you use that instead of floss or in addition to floss? Try flossing the exact way I'm supposed to show you, but if you are not successful, then you should be using those flossing aids, right? Okay, can you use that little rubber thing to like clean around your retainer and stuff? Yep, you can. Okay. Yes, I could do can. we could do a whole episode on why we still have these <laughs> retainers. Like why? those who have retainers are those who had braces in the past. Right. right? But yeah. like do yeah. I still need that? It's been 25 years. Uh, I think it's individually based. Okay. So you will need to talk do, to your okay, own. Okay, maybe we could do like a quick assessment. After yeah, sure. Right after. Off camera. Exactly. <laughs> okay, flossing how often? Flossing is you, you have something for dinner and you feel something is caught. Well, use your floss, right? Okay, it's that I'm with, with you on it. that. Right, yeah. right. But the flossing is the same twice every day, but the most important time... Twice every day? Yeah. Flossing twice every yeah. day? Yeah. Okay. So keep into the habit of brushing and flossing at the same time. Once you're done with okay. one, do the other one. But the if you can't brush or floss twice a day, the bedtime time is the most important time because you want to get rid of as much plaque as possible before you go to bed and not give a chance to those bacteria that are surrounding your teeth from staying in there all night, right? Okay, that's so good to know. It's, that's if a it's good logical, motivator. it's easy to remember, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, I think, I feel like I'm really airing my oral health habits um, now, but <laughs> I'm a great I'm a great toothbrusher, like no problem there. It's the flossing that is a hurdle for me, and I feel like other people share that experience. Mm -hmm. um, so like getting a good habit, probably just timing it with your toothbrushing, yep. right? Is that yep. like the best tip to make it become a habit? But to me it is. And people that have tight, tight contacts between their teeth. That's me. I know, I saw it. See, you already See, I've knew. got a trained eye. I've got a trained Thank eye. Thank you. It's harder for people like me. Yeah. Because yeah. it sometimes snaps in there and you got to yeah. really wiggle it in. You may want to use the waxed floss. Okay. So it's, it's more slippery, so it slides in through much easily. Yeah. Okay. Or you may want to use what we call a uh, water irrigator. I was just going to ask you about that. Yeah. This is actually, 
it's costly. So this okay. is something that I probably would not um, advise to everyone. However, if you can afford it and you have tight contacts and you cannot use the uh, traditional dental floss, maybe a water irrigated might be working better for you. Okay, so not essential, but I could invest yeah. in one if I wanted yes. to kind of thing. Yes. And should I be flossing in front of the mirror or can I do it while I'm watching TV? So when you floss, and usually some of the dental hygienists have this bad habit to show how to floss in front of a mirror. So everything you see in a mirror is like opposite of what you're actually seeing. So when I look at the mirror, my right hand is my left hand. So it's the left side. To me, it's so much easier to don't limit yourself to the bathroom in the mirror. You can actually do it whenever it's a good time for okay. you. No need for a mirror. Just go by feel, how you feel it. You'll feel it when it's clean and when yeah. it's, you, you will feel it. I like that. Yeah. Because I don't want to stand in the bathroom that long. No, no. Okay, mm -hmm. toothbrushes. Do you need a fancy toothbrush? Do you need an electric toothbrush? No. The Again, if you can afford those nice uh, toothbrushes that are, um, they're vibrating, they're round, or they're me. It, it, these are all great okay. uh, toothbrushes. It's just that if you can adequately brush properly, get rid of your plaque with the traditional toothbrush with soft bristles. Soft bristle. Yes. Why why spend more on something that works? Yeah. I mean, I buy the one that's on sale. But as long as you buy the one that's on sale and it has a soft bristle. Exactly. Exactly. You're good. Yep. Okay. Yep. What about fluoride? Because I feel like I used to get fluoride at the dentist and now I don't. Is it good for you? Is it essential? What's the deal? Well, fluoride is important. It's a natural element that you can find in the air, in the soil. Uh, so you don't need to worry about fluoride. It's actually found into toothpaste, right? So we, it's not how much you use, but the frequency that you're using. So if you do look, um, Health Canada recommends to use just a tiny grain of salt for our little one, our little children, toddlers, zero age zero to three. All you need is a grain of uh, rice. As you age from three to six, you know, a small green pea size is more than enough. Like I used to see those TV ads where they used a whole swirl. You oh, know, yeah, that's beautiful. How beautiful it looks, but that's way too much. There's okay. no need. Yeah. A tube of toothpaste should last you for quite a while. Should I be looking for toothpaste that has fluoride in it? Yes. 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 What about a whitening tooth toothpaste? Is that getting too specific? Yeah, it's getting too specific. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Then we have to go into more All scientific. All different kinds. Yeah. Yeah, it's and like just get the mint one. You actually need to yeah. visit a neurohealth health professional. To get your specific recommendation, Yeah, because right? you need so. to see how thick your enamel would be as well. Okay. So it's important. Well, we could talk after. And you yeah. Tell me Say so. what kind of get. <laughs> okay, let's come back to accessibility. Let's talk about accessibility because not everyone probably who's listening sees an oral health professional or maybe they're not seeing one mm. um, consistently. Could you talk about um, the importance of that? Yeah. Well, we know in Canada that about 75% of the population have reported to visit an oral health professional in the last 12 months. But we know, unfortunately, that's 25% that haven't. We also know that about two-thirds of our population has access to dental insurance. So, we know then that there's about 33% that don't have access to dental insurance. But in the meantime, there's a temporary uh, Canada dental benefit for children under 12. And this has actually currently helped uh, hundreds of thousands of children under 12 um, to access dental care. So it's helping. Right now, we're helping and improving access to oral health care. Very cool. So yep. we're closing the gap. We're addressing the gap. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Very cool. Yeah, we're almost at the end of time here, Lisa. Already? I know. Um, you are a senior oral health advisor mm -hmm. with Health Canada. You're also a dental hygienist. Yes. What is the best part of your job? Oh, the best. I ask because 
You seem very excited about oral Well, health. I've got a few years left at the government. So to me, having the opportunity to work on a public health programs that will look at the prevention, not just at the treatment portion, to me, that was the best possible way to end my career in the government as a dental hygienist. Um, so that's what's important to me. I'm passionate about the public health. I'm not passionate about all the gadgets that can happen. It's just how can we effectively uh, clean our teeth and make sure that the oral health status is adequate for all the uh, Canadian population. That's what's important. Very cool. Thank you. And when you talk to, you've talked to lots of people, I can tell, about their oral health, what has been the best piece of advice? What do you think people need to know the most? Well, I think they truly need to understand the um, impact of oral health on the overall health. Because for years, for ages, um, You've had the overall health on one side because you go see a doctor and you do all that. But it's funny because the mouth doesn't seem to be in the body itself. So to me, I think it's important that they get to understand the link between oral health and overall health. Love it. Good. So we'll put some links in the show notes about resources. Are there any resources you want to throw to right now? For people I, listening? I actually could address the audience to the government of Canada okay. and then just click the keywords uh, oral health. It'll bring you to a whole bunch of links and to a whole bunch of information that's very adequate for people who want to know a lot more about uh, oral health. Okay, so Canada.ca, yes. type in oral health. Exactly. Then it'll take you to four or five oral health web pages. Some of them is how to take care of your teeth, and it's got the specific age groups. It also has a page on fluoride, it, and it has a page on the Canada Dental Benefit as well currently. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah, that's my best uh, offer to you. That's great. Thank okay. you so much, Is that? It Thank has you. been a pleasure talking to you. And... Let's chat more about my teeth after the show. <laughs> we will. We will. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. Thanks for tuning in to Healthy Canadians. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to click the like button below and subscribe to stay up to date on future episodes. Find us wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review if you like what you heard. For more information on the health topics that matter to you, visit Canada.ca slash health.